Hi, my name is Marta Alto and I want to welcome you to our new DVD on sewing jackets. Jackets come in many different styles. Some are more complex and some are easier. I'm wearing a really simple cardigan jacket, one of the easiest things to sew for a beginner. But I'm going to focus in this DVD on sewing a blazer style jacket that's with a notched collar with welted pockets so that we have lots of details plus a lining so you learn all the steps to make the more complicated jacket, making an easy one even easier. I spend a lot of time altering my pattern and so therefore I want to give a final check to make sure I'm happy with the fit of the tissue before I start cutting out my jacket. So it looks pretty good. I'm ready to start on my jacket. The next step after your pattern fits is to make sure that your fabric is prepared and ready to sew. You want to check to make sure that it's straight on grain. Um, this is a nice wool crepe and because it's wool I can just tear one end and then it will be straight across the end. On other fabrics I'll pull a thread but I will show you first with the wool and I want to make sure that the edges, the selvage edges match up the selvage is the lengthwise grain. In this particular fabric, it's a nice dark gray, so you can easily see the selvage. And we want to make sure that the cut or torn edge is straight. And then we can just steam it smooth. And when I lay this, there aren't any drag lines, so the fabric is pretty even to itself. Let's check to see if it shrinks. The iron is set on steam, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold the iron over an area, putting it down almost totally on the fabric, but not hard, and then checking to see if there's little iron wrinkles around the point of the iron, and there are just a few, which indicate I do need to pre-shrink the whole piece, and you can actually see it shrunk along the edge here, too. So to do that, I just lightly steam. I'm not putting pressure on the fabric, I'm just gliding it over the top. And I would steam the whole piece flat on a flat surface. If you're not fortunate enough to have a fabulous flat table like I have, use your bed because it's a nice flat surface. We don't want it hanging over the edge of an ironing board because then it might steam out of shape and stretch. So in a Steam an area, let it completely, totally cool before I move it, and then steam another area. So that's how I steam shrink my wool. Once your fabric is steamed and prepared, if you're ready to start laying out your pattern, I do want to say something a little bit about fabric that you're going to wash. That definitely run to the washer and dryer, and then of course iron it to steam out all the wrinkles before you start sewing. But if you're planning on washing your garment, you do want to wash the fabric and the lining as well before you start sewing. Okay, I've laid out part of my pattern pieces. Because I've done a lot of altering to my pattern, it no longer fits the layout that was nicely provided for me by the pattern company. So what I usually do is I just lay out the big pieces first. And then, of course, I check the grain marking from the grain line marked on the pattern to the edge to make sure that i am got the pattern laid straight on the fabric. That's very important that it's on grain. Um, I do want to say something else. Because I altered my front pattern piece, I had to alter my front lining piece. Don't forget that. And I had to lengthen my front facing piece the same amount I lengthened the front. So don't forget to alter parts that connect to altered pattern pieces. I'm measuring from the top of the grain line to the fold. You can measure to the selvage edge if that's the closer edge. And I'm bringing the ruler down to the other end. And my list, I just kept my finger on that mark. That way I don't have to remember a number. And then I move the tissue at the other end. And now my pattern is placed on grain on the fabric. And that way I know everything will hang correctly. I'm going to sew the long dart and 
Now hold the fabric a little taut. You always sew from the open end to the closed end to the point. If you have a dart that's double end, in other words, a point at both ends, then you want to start in the middle and sew to each point. When I get about three-fourths of an inch from the point of the dart, I'm going to shorten my stitch length. Oh, down to like 1.5, and then I'll sew off the point a little neater. And the last couple of stitches will be just in the interfacing. And then I'm just going to chain off. So now I'm just sewing in air, lift the presser foot, pull the fabric forward, and then stitch in the end of the dart. Just a couple more stitches. Then I should have a little tail that's anchoring. That's the tail. And the dart is anchored without backstitching. If you backstitch, you cause puckers. Once the darts are sewn, of course, they need to be pressed. And we like to press them flat first just to meld the stitches together. And then I'm going to slash this big wide one open. Actually, I'm going to actually cut it down to about a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then press it open. This is a pretty hefty dart, and I don't need all that bulk inside the garment. And then with a small pointed scissor, I can cut up into the point of the dart as far as I can. And I can go quite a ways. And then the dart needs to be pressed open. I'm going to do the long straight part over a seam roll and then the pointed part over a ham. The seam roll allows the fabric of the garment to fall away. And when I press, I'm pressing just the stitching of the seam allowance rather than embedding the seam all the way to the front of my jacket. Just press a little ways and use my fingers to flatten. You can use a wooden clapper if you will have one. My fingers are very convenient and I use them a lot. I'm going to flatten until it cools and I don't want to move it until it cools. And the point of the dart, of course, needs to go over a ham to give that rounded shape. So my fronts are completely done, and I'm ready to work on the next parts of the jacket. So I have gone ahead and sewn my uh, side back to my back and my center back seam. And the next thing I need to do is my back stay. So let me show you how that's done. I wanted to talk a little bit about ravelly fabrics. So I have this pretty heavy silk. Because it's a good weight silk, I don't need to fully interface it. So I've just put a bias piece of interfacing in the hem area, and I've put in my back stay. I'm going to show you how I cut that. But I wanted to just mention a little bit about Ravelly fabrics. I don't generally surge to finish the seams on an inside of a jacket that's going to be lined because I don't like to put that extra bulk into the seams. But on a fabric like this that really ravels, it's not a bad idea to just do a nice surge finish. When you do, make sure you don't cut any of your seam allowance away. You just want to cut off the straggly edges. And then another little tip about really ravelly fabrics, if you clip, the clips don't show. So you can use these fabulous little stick-on dots. And that will allow you to mark your uh, notches or dots or whatever you want. And you'll have a marking that's really easy to see. So what I've done, I have my back pattern pieces. And I overlapped the side back onto the back at the stitching line. And then because I have a high round and a round back, my back seam is curved. 
So I'm going to sew a seam. If your back is fairly straight, you can put the stitching line on the fold so that you don't have a seam at your center back. And so I'm, this is just a lightweight cotton or a cotton poly interfacing. This actually happens to be a white muslin and that works as well. And you're just going to cut the back stay goes down to the side seam and then about oh six seven inches down from the center back and just curve that over to the side seam. You can cut this with pinking shears if you want that kind of helps buffer the edge. So what I need to do is sew my center back seam and then I'll show you how you attach the back stay to the back of the jacket. Just dab tiny drops of glue in the seam allowance only. Then pat the stay in place and allow it to dry. First, let me show you how to prepare the roll line of the under collar. What I'm going to do is stitch right on the roll line and I'm going to stitch with a stitch length of one. So very, very close stitch length and stitch right on the roll line. And as I'm stitching, I'm going to pull away from the roll line. So I'm pulling with both hands. And it kind of constricts the roll line, brings it closer together. So after you've done the stitching, the collar doesn't lay flat, it's kind of puckered, but it will then fold right on the roll line and give you that perfect stand that you want for your collar. I like to sew my buttons on by machine if I can. Uh, these don't have a shank, so I can use the machine. Once I've gotten my seam pressed and my vent ready to um, finish, if you have my little philosophy on buttons, if they come two to a card, I buy two cards and I put two buttons on and these came three to a card. So I bought two cards and I put three buttons on each sleeve. It just makes it kind of fun. A lot of the newer machines today have a, a actual stitch for sewing on buttons and it actually is set for the standard width of the holes on a button. So once you double check to make sure it does indeed swing inside your button. Just stitch a few stitches and then a few more stitches to tie it off and we're ready to go to the next button. So let me show you where to do the ease. Basically you ease the top half of the sleeve. So if I fold the sleeve so that the center, that's the center dot at the top of the cap and the center at the underneath, if I ease from this point to this point, I'm doing the top half of the sleeve. So I'm going to place my little bias strip starting with that point. We used to say ease between the notches, but notches sometimes are in different places, and so this is a little more um, consistent. And I'm going to place the edge of my fabric at my 5 8 inch seam allowance. I'm going to lengthen my stitch to 4 and I'm going to stitch. I use a couple of stitches just to anchor and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch the bias and sew it to the sleeve as I'm stretching. Don't stretch the sleeve, just stretch the bias. I'm only holding the bias up higher, stretching. This just works like magic and it's so easy. If it doesn't go in easily the first time, you can easily unstitch it and redo it. But look, the cap is automatically eased, nice and smooth and ready to pin into the jacket. 
after I've got the collar on, I like to put the jacket back on because now the neck is controlled by the collar and it's going to sit correctly on my shoulders. I like to do this before I set the sleeves because if I'm going to have to do any little tweaks on the seams, it's easier before uh, the sleeves are in. Okay, I have my jacket with the under collar. My sleeves are set in. And I have the lining with the facings and the upper collar. So I'm going to put these sections together. And again, we're going to be stitching from the dot. And in this case, we're going to stitch from the dot down the lapel, and then from the dot up and to the center back, and then repeating on the other side of the jacket. We want the dots to come together at this point right here where the two collars and neckline seams intersect. So that's the important part of marking and pinning. We'll pin from here. So now the neckline. So we want to bring the neckline of the under collar and the neckline of the upper collar together. So what I've done is pin in the well of the seam right in the ditch both necklines together and they've both pinned the whole length and the next step is to sew them together. Well, my jacket is done. I think it looks just great. I'm very pleased. I can actually button it though it is snug if I do that deliberately. Remember I don't really plan on wearing it buttoned and I hope you enjoyed my uh, DVD on sewing jackets. Of course it's based on our fabulous book Jackets for Real People, and there's a lot more information in the book.